I'm so glad that you can be with us for another study of God's Word, especially participating in this series, Hearing God's Message. Come today to Romans chapter 6. We could title the theme that Paul develops in Romans chapter 6, Grace Reigns. That means sin no longer reigns in the life of a Christian. Freedom from sin and death means freedom from the law of sin. And that is possible through grace and through Christ. Well, we'll explore that. I feel that we've done a great deal of the heavy lifting that's necessary to bring the message into focus. Uh, some of the previous lessons have been a little longer than I wished. I'm going to try to get back on schedule, both with the length of the lessons and simply not only studying together, but trying to point out two or three major points that will help us hear God's message. So coming back very quickly to chapters one through five, gospel power, gospel power, God's power for salvation, gospel righteousness is for everyone, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. In the gospel, God's wrath is revealed against unrighteousness, against sin. We have two chapters that deal with that really parts of three chapters, the end of chapter one, chapter two, first part of chapter three, but the gospel also reveals God's righteousness, a righteousness that is through the faithfulness of Christ to the one who believes. So we imitate Jesus' faithfulness. This righteousness of God is apart from the law. Chapter three, verse 20, it is through the faithfulness of Christ to the one who believes, who trusts in Jesus, who imitates the faithfulness of Jesus, verses 20, 21 of Romans 3, so that God is both just and justifier. In chapter 4, Abraham, who is declared righteous based on the promise that he believes, is thus justified. He is declared righteous by promise, by grace, and not by law. And because it does not depend on Old Testament law. This declaration of righteousness to Abraham, he becomes the father of the faithful, and everyone can be included impartially. First part of chapter 5 says that this righteousness from God, this justification, empowers and blesses and reconciles us in Jesus Christ, and we have the beginning of Paul's teaching concerning a cosmic struggle that we will be reading about in chapters 5 through 8, sin and death versus righteousness and life. And the end of chapter 5 concludes that grace reigns. We have come to the essence of the good news. Uh, Paul is going to point out two simple truths. Number one, Christians have died to sin. Christians have been freed from sin and death. Freedom from the reign of sin and death means freedom from sin. It is possible because grace now reigns under righteousness or through righteousness unto life in Jesus Christ, eternal life. The second point of the chapter is that freedom from sin and death means freedom from law. We'll see that right in the middle of the chapter, Paul affirms that we as Christians are not under law, but are under grace. The rest of the chapter will point out that we always have the opportunity to choose which master to obey, but one must make a choice. And when one makes a choice, the result is that the master chosen is the one to whom we are enslaved. The master rejected is the one from whom we are free. And again, the restatement at the end of chapter six, the same truth, that we had previously read at the end of chapter five, sin leads to death. The wages of sin are death, but grace leads to life in Jesus Christ. So here's how it was said in chapter five, the law caused the increase of sin, but where sin abounded, grace superabounded. Formerly sin reigned in death, but now grace reigns through righteousness leading us to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Great affirmation as we begin to think about what has been made possible 
in Jesus Christ. Well, chapter six continues Paul's explanation. Despite the entry of sin into the world and death by sin, I'm thinking of chapter five, verse 12, the reality is certain. The reality that we just read in chapter five, verses 20 and 21, guaranteed in Christ, instead of sin reigning unto death, grace reigns unto righteousness and eternal life. Now, I want to help us understand very quickly the message of chapter six. We're going to come back and look at it in more detail, but right now, as we begin in chapter six, verse one, would you pay especially close attention to the underlined sections of the text? The NET says that the first part of the chapter is about the believer's freedom from sin's domination. Are we to remain in sin so grace may increase? No, we died to sin. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or chapter 6, verse 6, our old man was crucified with him, with Christ, so the body of sin would no longer dominate us. We are no longer enslaved to sin. In our death to sin, we are freed from sin, verse 7. Or verse 11, consider yourselves dead to sin because you're alive to God in Christ Jesus. Or verse 12, do not let sin reign in your mortal body to obey its desires. Do not present your members to sin, but rather as instruments to righteousness. Sin will not have mastery over you. You are not under law, but under grace, verse 14. So we come to the second half of the chapter, and we see the theme continued. The believer is now enslaved not to sin, but to God's righteousness. Remember that grace reigns through righteousness unto eternal life. Shall we sin because we're not under law, but under grace? Absolutely not. Or verse 16, you're either slaves of sin or of obedience. You're slaves of the one you obey, either sin resulting in death or obedience resulting in righteousness. But you can't serve two masters. You can't be a slave of sin and obedient to righteousness at the same time. Verse 17, you were slaves to sin, but in your obedience to the teaching, you've been freed from sin. But now we have a new master, enslaved to righteousness. This is kind of a human illustration, Paul says, verse 19, but here's the point, when you're slaves of sin, you're free from righteousness. When you're a slave to righteousness, we could say on inserting something into the text, but the corollary would be true. When you are a slave of righteousness, then you're freed from sin. So he's looking back at the time they were under the law, slaves of sin, when sin reigned unto death. And finally, the last three verses, now freed from sin, enslaved to God. You have the benefit that leads to sanctification, the end, eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Well, here's the question. Do we believe what Paul wrote? How have we come to doubt the primary message of this chapter? Here's what Paul says. He says, instead of being controlled by sin, we are controlled by grace. Perhaps we spent so much time on chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, focusing on baptism, that we forgot about the new life. Instead of being controlled by sin, we are controlled by grace. The grace and righteousness of God means that the Christian is not under law. It's true that sin reigned. The old man lived according to physical desires, and the law controlled that person, but grace reigns in a new person with a new life in the spirit. Can't wait to chapter eight. So here are the two major sections of chapter six, one through 14, freedom from sin's domination. And the last few verses of the chapter, 
now enslaved to righteousness, which means that we are freed from sin. Well, let's look a little more closely without spending an inordinate amount of time. Let's look a little more closely. We just read in chapter 5, verses 20 and 21 about grace reign. Whereas sin formerly reigned and the result was death, that's what happened when sin entered the world through Adam, continuing even from Adam to Moses, continuing with the coming of the law, but always there was a universality to sin. Sin came to everyone, and as a result of that, they died spiritually. So that was a reality. After the entry of sin and the fall in the Garden of Eden, there was a universality. There was a ger generic nature. Didn't matter which particular sin. Not everyone sinned like Adam did, but nonetheless, death reigned over those who had sinned. That re reigned in their life as a result of their sin. But the good news with which Paul concludes chapter five, after a series of contrasts and a series of comparisons, showing how much better the righteousness through Christ is as opposed to the sinfulness that came through Adam, he comes to chapter 6 and verse 1, are we to remain in sin? So grace gets bolder and bolder, it increases, it superabounds. No, we died to sin, and if we've died to sin, and notice that it, that is what has happened. We have died to sin. How can we live in it? And we know we died to sin because we were baptized into the death of Jesus, and so we have been raised uh, to live a new life, he says in chapter 6, verse 4. So here is the truth. Now we're united with Christ, both in the likeness of his death and also in the likeness of his resurrection, in the crucifixion of the old person, the previous person. The body of sin no longer dominates us. We no longer find sin reigning in our lives. Do not miss the point of this chapter. We would no longer be enslaved to sin because one who has died has been freed from sin. So we died with Christ, and now we have nothing to do with sin, and we have nothing to do with death. Death no longer has mastery over Christ, and we ourselves can be dead to sin as we are alive to God in Christ Jesus. So don't let sin reign in your mortal body. Don't yield yourself. This is a decision we make. We can decide that sin will reign or it will not reign. But in Christ, grace reigns. Don't present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but rather as instruments of righteousness. And I bridge those two verses, 13, 14. Sin no longer has mastery. Sin doesn't have mastery because you are not under law. You're under grace. And don't miss the point that is so clear in chapter 6. We're not under law. We're not under the law. We're not under law. We are under grace. So that means there is a new slave system, if you will. Not a bad system. We have a benevolent master. But here is the truth. Again, the question, verse 15, shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? Absolutely not. There's this choice. You are a slave to the one you obey. You either obey sin, and remember where sin leads, that leads to death, or you obey God, the grace of Christ resulting in righteousness. You were the slaves of sin, but with your obedience to the teaching, you've been freed from sin. Now, it's true that the result is enslavement to righteousness. Look how this human illustration is developed. You once presented your members as slaves to impurity, sin, lawlessness, more lawlessness, but now to righteousness, leading to our salvation, our sanctification, our justification, the gospel power. When you were slaves of sin, you were free with regard to righteousness. If you become a slave to righteousness, then you'll be free from sin because you can't serve two masters. So here is the goal. Freed from sin, enslaved to God, leading to sanctification, eternal life. Again, the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. 
So here are the two great truths. I come from the Bible study, if you will, to the sermonette. Uh, here are the final points in a couple of final slides. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, Christians die to sin. That happens in our baptism, according to Romans chapter 6, but we are freed from the reign of sin and death. We're free from the reign of sin, which leads to death, and that freedom from sin means that grace takes over. Grace is now in control, a grace that has come to us through Christ to righteousness that we might be God's people. And so we see the great message, freedom from sin and death means freedom from the law. We are no longer under grace, but we are under law. That's verse 15. That's the second point. Because we've been freed from sin and death, we're now freed from law. We are not under the law. We are under grace. Law means that sin is credited. Grace means that righteousness is credited. But here are some conditions. We must choose which master to obey. We have to make a choice. Will we obey sin? Will we let sin control? Or will we obey God? Will we obey righteousness and the grace of God in our life? We'll be enslaved to one and free from the other. Whichever choice we make, please remember, the wages of sin are death, but grace leads to life in Christ. So here we are. The chapter divisions were inserted later. Perhaps it's not fair to, to stop at the end of of chapter 6, but freedom from sin and death is possible in our life. Un uh, incredible, unbelievable. Freedom from sin is possible when grace reigns. Gospel righteousness is ours through the faithfulness of Christ, declared righteous based on the faithfulness of Christ to those who believe that justifying righteousness, even as in the case of Abraham, depends on grace, reigning sin, brought death, but reigning grace brings life. And if grace reigns, sin no longer reigns in the life of a Christian. So much looking forward to our study in chapter 7. Let's have a brief word of prayer. I'll have some final words, and the lesson will be yours. Father, we're grateful because you love us, because you have empowered us in ways that are almost beyond our understanding, beyond belief that we can, in fact, uh, be free from sin, not only from uh, the, the counting of sin against us, but, but we're free we're from the power of sin. Something has happened in Christ that was never possible in the law because now we see that in Christ, sin is handled. There's, there's a way not only to be forgiven, but to be freed from the power of sin in our lives. We are so grateful that we are no longer dominated. We choose to enslave ourselves to grace, to righteousness, and to our holy God, grateful for the salvation, grateful for the power of righteousness in our life, grateful for the gospel, which is power for salvation, so that Christ's faithfulness brings into our life faithfulness and deliverance from the power of sin. Help us to make the right choice. Help us not to be led astray, thinking that somehow sin is natural in the life of the Christian. Bless us in our study. Bless us as we try to live out these realities. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, always grateful that you can be with us in these studies. Um, please continue to review. Have your Bible with you, and I'm looking forward to the study of chapter 7. There are many misunderstandings. We come to chapter 7, especially thinking that for some reason, sin might still have control. In the life of a Christian, we'll try to put that false understanding to rest in our next Bible study, Hearing God's Message. Looking forward to having you with me for the next study. Until then, may God bless.